Hi, my name is Abiola David. I'm a Microsoft MVP. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a database in the Qsto query language, which is the language that we can use to analyze and query data in the Microsoft Fabric. So we're going to see how to create a table in the database and ingest a sales data flat file. So let's get started. So I'm going to come to the part that experience from here and we want to create a workspace. So click on workspaces and choose new workspace. So I'm going to call it KQL database and then click apply. I'm going to switch from the part that experience to data factory or even real time analytics. And then I'm going to click on KQL database. And of course, we need to give name to the database. So I'm going to call it you know database again you can call it whatever you want and then we can choose the type whether i want to create a new database a default or new shortcut database so i want to go with the new database click on create there we go so we've been able to create our database and then we can see the database details the name of the creator the region the time it was created and so on next we want to see how to create a table within a database and ingest a sales data flat file. So I'm going to click on this new drop down and choose table. Now in the new table for the destination tab, we need to specify the name of the table. So I'm going to call it F transaction. And then you can see the check mark simply means the name of the table is not in use. So click on next source. And then in the source, we can, we can choose the source type. So I'm going to click on this drop down. And of course, we have so many options like the blob, file, blob container, event ops, Amazon S3, one leg. So I want to choose from file. And then we can upload the file by clicking on this and then browse through the location where it is. I'm going to call it KKL. That's the name of the file in CSV. Okay, that's very important. And click on open. And then the file is going to be uploaded. And there we go. So we can see the file name, the status uploaded, and we can delete. We can see the file size and then click on next schema. And then in the schema tab, we can see the compression type, which is uncompressed, and the data format is comma separated value. And then we can even see the command viewer, which shows the query in KQL that we can use to create the table as well as inject data. And then we can see the partial data preview. We have options to specify the data type from the default data types. For instance, the date column do have string default data type. So based on my discovery, I discovered that when I change to date data type, some of the date values will not be available. So I'm going to leave it in this string data type, okay? And I'm going to change these, the unit, the memory column from the long data type to int data type. So I'm going to do the same thing for the price. Click on this drop down, just change data type. I'm going to choose integer and then for the sales, I'm going to click on this drop down, change data type, int. Of course, you're not going to see the name as int. It's going to show as long, but it has been changed based on my personal discovery. So the date remains string. We can just leave it and then click next summary. And then we can see create table is in progress. And of course, the table is successfully created. And then we can see the ingestion preparation. And of course, we can see the ingestion one total blobs. And there is absolutely no error. One succeeded. And we can see the data preview. Cool. Go ahead and click close. And there we go. So we can see our data in it. So when I click on that, I can see different kind of information like the table details, the number of rows, 297, the rows ingested in the last 24 hours. It's the same number. And then we can see the schema last altered by myself with my email and so on and so forth. And then I can scroll down. Then I can see the column names as well as the corresponding data types. So because we did not change the date column, we, it's going to be string, but we can see the unit column price and the sales 
were transformed from the default string to integer data type. And then we can go ahead and begin to query this data. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to query data as well as connect to the data in the Kisto Query Language Database from the Power BI desktop. Thank you and bye for now. Cheers.